Welcome to our slide regarding on open education resources. This slide is done by Kavinesh, Lubna, Adi Turnship and Vigneswaran. This slide consists of definition, types, paid OER and unpaid OER. OER is a teaching, learning and research materials that make use of appropriate tools such as open licensing to permit the free reuse, continuous improvement and repurposing by others. It is any type of form, mostly in digital format. And it also allows reuse, revise, remix and redistribution of the contents used. Why was the OER made? It is made for substitution, as OER replaces similar learning materials, allowing for the same functionalities. OER also focuses on augmentation. OER constitutes in an improvement in terms of previous learning materials efficacy. OER was also made for the use of modification or redesigning of learning activity. OER enables a substantial learning activity redesign compared to previous learning materials. And lastly, OER was made to redefine the pedagogical approach. The OER allows new forms of learning that was previously unavailable with previous teachings and learning configuration. The qualities of OERs are all for the sake of 21st century learners. 21st century learners would mean that the OER are learner-centered. They are highly focused on learning, but not as an alternative to the key roles for teachers. OERs are also structured and well-designed. It definitely needs careful design and professionalism alongside inquiry and autonomous learning. Aside from that, OER are also profoundly personalized. They are acutely sensitive to individuals and group differences and offering tailored feedback. You can also find that OER are very inclusive. Such sensitivity to individuals and group differences means that they are definitely fundamentally inclusive. Finally, OERs are also quite social. Learning is more effective in group settings where learners collaborate and there's connection in community. What is the type of open education resources? The type of open education resources are MOOC, known as MOOC, Meet Open Courseware. OCW, Linda, Udemy, Khan Academy, Kuriki, Skillshare. There are two types of open education resources. First, unpaid open education resources. Open education resources are teaching, learning, and research materials in any medium digital that have been released under an open license that permits no cost access use adaptation and redistribution by others with no or limited restrictions the examples of unpaid open education resources are mock mid open course Khan Academy, Kuriki, Skillshare. The next open education resources are paid open education resources. Open education resources are teaching, learning and research materials in any medium digital that have been released under an closed license that permits cost to access, use, adaptation and redistribution by others with no or limited restrictions. Examples of paid open education resources are Udemy, 
Linda. What is Udemy? Udemy is an online learning and teaching marketplace with over 100,000 courses and 24 million students. Among the courses category provided by Udemy are Programming, Marketing, Data Science and Arts. What are the functions of Udemy? Udemy serves as a platform that allows instructors to build online courses on topic of their choosing. Users or students can take courses to earn credit towards technical certification or just to pick up or improve various job-related skills. Udemy also helps people around the world who want to learn a new skill by allowing them to learn at their own time and pace. How Udemy looks like There is a guidance to choose the right course. Course category and specific course category provided by Udemy. There are lists of course with price, instruction and ratings. It also consists of course content objectives, requirements, description, and review. How Udemy works. There is five steps how it works. First, sign up or log in. Second, choose the course of your interest. Then, pay the course with online banking or debit card in a dollar currency. Apply coupon if you have it. Fourth, complete the course with provided hours, video, article, resources, exercises, and other activities. And finally, you can get your certificate of completion. There are few pros and cons of Udemy. The pros of Udemy are Courses are flexible, more affordable, accessible, and open for all across the globe. Udemy is an effective learning platform and gives huge discounts. Then the rating system separates the good courses from the poor courses. Unfortunately, there are also cons of Udemy. Some of the courses are not very deep or true. Then, some courses, especially the free ones, sometimes blatantly try to upsell paid products. Mock known as Massive Open Online Course. It is a model which serves free online learning content to any person who wants to take a course without no limit attendance. This model is widely used by Malaysian public university such as UPNM, UTHM, IIUM, UMK, USM, UKM, Unimas, Uniza, UUM, UMS, USIM, UMP, UPC, UPM, UMT, UTM, UITM, Unimap, and University Technical Malaysia Melaka. Uses of mock to create self blended learning situation students are learning and doing their activities their own help universities and lecturers to share causes and knowledge help students to learn from peers around the world career exploration for high school students how it looks consists of 
A. Instructions video B. Practices activities C. Resources and tips D. It got table of content which help you to navigate an orientation that provide information regarding on module outcome and opportunity to explore. How it works? A. Login B. Choose which course you interested which offered by university c after you choose the course you will be shown the outcome of the course and topic will you learn in that course start date duration course and community that join the course d later press join e after join the course you should do some of the tasks to show your progress f there are online toolbar it can be used to chat with other students advantages courses are offered for free courses are available for audience across the global courses is provided by professors and lecturers from the university students can access more information that provided in class disadvantages learner with disabilities and poor internet connection can't use mock it can provide attention and personalized courseware from a tutor language barrier when offering mock to students from other region mock can provide personalized attention from a tutor Welcome to the game part of the OER resource class. So, there is more than one match. Let's see what they are. Would it be MOOC? Is MOOC an unpaid OER? Let's see. MOOC is an unpaid OER. Is Udemy an unpaid OER? Apparently not. Is Linda an unpaid OER? It is also not an unpaid OER. Udemy and Linda are paid OER. Moving onwards to OCW, Skillshare, Quirky, and Khan Academy are also unpaid OER. Let's move on to our second game, also known as Garden OER. Let's play the game. Choose your character between Lubna, Kavi, Vicky, and Eddie. Let's try look now. What is the definition of the open educational resources in education? This seems quite tricky. Could it be social media platform to share videos, pictures, and stories? Or a fun game to students? Or teaching learning and research material that makes use of appropriate tools? Or educational guidance for teachers? Let's try B. Oh no! Your plant was eaten by zombies! Also, what plant? Let's play again. What is the definition of open educational resources in education? I'm sorry, I think it's C. <laughs> Move on. What does open education resources in education consist of? Materials for teaching and learning, test your exam questions, and research material only. My guess is A. <laughs> Move on. How many types of OER are there? Two, three, four, or five. Unpaid and paid OER, right? <laughs> OER released under an open license that permit no cost access, use, adaptation, and redistribution by other with no limited restriction is an... So it said open license permits no cost access. No cost. Where do you go? Did users need internet coverage to access OER? Yes. Opening up that particular content, and right. What are the examples of paid open educational resources? It was Udemy and Linda. I think it was just two of them. What is Udemy? A platform to share images, videos, and our social life. Platform to send messengers. Platform to play games. Platform of online learning and teaching activities. Instructors use.
use Udemy as a tool to allow instructors to build online courses on topics of their choosing, gain money by sharing notes, share pictures of their lives, to do final examinations. <laughs> Mock is also known as Model is serves paid online learning content for any person who wants to take a course with no limit attendance. Model is gives free online learning content to any person who wants to take a course with no limit attendance. So free and paid. Mook is <laughs> One more. Oh, one more to go. Oops. Which of the following is false on Mook? To create self-blended learning situations, help university lecturers to share our courses and knowledge, students learn from peers from around the world, instructors to apply teacher-centered learning, my guess is... Um, B. Oh well. We are back on the last moment of our class of OER. Let's revise what we have learned today. Here's a video for you guys to watch. OER are open educational resources, which means they are available to people without a copyright license on them. The authors allow users to save, print, edit, and copy their work without the risk of a copyright infringement. And they can be textbooks, websites, online resources, print resources. I'm here to help faculty to introduce them to OER and get them comfortable with the idea. They allow faculty to mix and match and shape the OER how they want, so they can take a few chapters from one book, a few from another, mix in some online resources, maybe some of their own resources, and make a package customized to their class. So what used to happen was a student would have to buy a textbook. They were paying $250 for an intermediate algebra textbook. And so students would just wouldn't buy the book. And then they wouldn't do the homework because they didn't have a book. And with the OER, every student in my class has a textbook. They benefit me because I know now that my students are all going to have a textbook. They benefit my students because they have a, a textbook. They don't have to go running to the library to borrow one, take pictures. It's, it's a win-win uh, situation. I have two courses currently running in OER. It's a vehicle for faculty to examine their courses, to examine the content. For some people, for example, for myself, I've taught intro psych for 10 years. and. This initiative was a place for me to say, okay, what have I been doing for 10 years? What has worked? Do I even need to use one of these traditional textbooks anymore when I know that there are peer-reviewed sources available to me that people have put in hard work to create and are willing to give that to others to use? My experience at OERs has been great. Um, they're really useful and resourceful, and they're very easy to navigate. What I like the most about the OER is they're free, they're really easy to navigate, so I can find what I'm looking for faster. My experiences with OER has been great. I get to print off the pages that I actually need, not the whole chapter or like the whole book, and it saves me a lot of money. I would really recommend that faculty check out OER and see what's happening in their field on this campus, on other campuses in SUNY and across the nation. And they may be very surprised um, at what's available and how it can work for their discipline. Thank you so much for watching that video. Thank you so much for holding on with us today. Hopefully you've learned one thing or two with our video today. Now that the video is posted online, make sure you leave a like and comment on what you think about the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Hopefully you learned something from me today. This is Gigi's Joji. Have a nice day.